Hey guys, this is Jay Caldwell with Jay Unboxing here giving you a personal prediction for Jared Anderson versus Charles Martin. And as always, this is just my take. Your predictions can be left down in the comments section below. Would love to hear them all. It's a good, decent heavyweight scrap, so anything can happen, of course, with the big boys in the ring. Would love to hear what you guys have to say about this down in the comments section below. And a little bit of fight info here. We have Jared Anderson taking on Charles Martin. As mentioned, this will be at the Huntington Center in Toledo, Ohio, airing live on ESPN in the heavyweight division with no titles on the line. Well, this is an awkward one to some degree. You know, I had the previous prediction for Jared Anderson taking on Zan Kutupitsky all done and recorded and ready to go. And, of course, that just goes by the wayside when things switch up on you. You have the issues with the visa for Kuzubitsky, and naturally that fight falls through. Fun times. That being said, this isn't the worst replacement, at least on paper. We'll get more into that, but I do think it could be a lot worse with Charles Martin stepping in. Charles Martin is a former world titleist, as brief as that might have been, and he's been in there with some decent names as well, so certainly has some experience, and Anderson needs this sort of fight eventually at some point, so here we are. What's more, you get to see how he compares to the likes of Anthony Joshua and Luis Ortiz, former Martin foes, so that's always kind of fun in its own way as well. So does Anderson impress, or will Martin shock the heavyweight division? Let's break this one down. Starting with Anderson, for Anderson to win, I think you want to land the quick one too. Now, quite frankly, this sounds pretty simple, but that's because it is. That's what you want to do when you want to keep things kind of simple, especially if you're facing something like Martin in a replacement foe who has some experience. If you're starting out there and trying to do all these, you know, tricks and trying to get too fancy in the ring, so to speak, you're just bound to get caught by something you really don't need to get caught by. Even if it's not a shot that completely concusses you or knocks you out or even hurts you, really, it's just a shot you don't need to take, and it's a bad habit you should try to avoid. So start off by keeping things nice and simple with that one, too. It's also kind of a quick way to test what Martin has in terms of his durability, in terms of his reflexes at an advanced age. He's 37 years of age. You want to be able to test that by just getting out your quickest shots when you're already a fasted hand fighter to begin with. Test those kind of waters. You have that massive speed advantage against just about anyone that you're going to face in the heavyweight division. You're going to want to use it. Of course, naturally, this is going to set up a lot of the other work you're looking to get done anyway. But again, start it off with the simple, basic fundamentals of which you have decent fundamentals to begin with. Use them in this fight, and I think you'll have some success. I would also say keep the tempo high. You aren't exactly a volume puncher, per se, but you do well when you put your shots together. This is a fight where you're definitely going to want to put your shots together, just because of the tempo that will follow in this particular fight. Again, that's something you can build off of that one too. see what other openings are there, and if you can kind of get more things going as the rounds progress, because he isn't offering you much in the way of resistance. As I've mentioned as well, you're also the younger man. Martin is 37, you're 23, about a decade and a half between the two of you. You're going to want to show that on the night, and you're going to do that with tempo, high energy. Again, it doesn't have to be over the top or far too complex, just pushing the pace a little bit, using those feints, getting that jab out there, setting up those bigger shots that are forcing him to have to work. And this, of course, is something that's going to be even bigger because he's coming in on short notice, probably has a short camp. Take advantage of that by setting the pace early. Finally, I would say don't get caught reaching. Overall, I think Anderson has pretty decent fundamentals, as I've mentioned. He's pretty fundamentally sound. That being said, the one thing that I do notice sometimes that he does is he reaches a bit. Now, He's not the biggest heavyweight in the world, so I think sometimes it's the reach deficit that forces him to have to kind of step over that front foot. Still, there isn't a need to take a chance and give really Martin any reason to think that he has a chance in this fight by just leaving yourself open that way because Martin does have a reach advantage. So you want to make sure that you're limiting the times when you do that. You want to step into your range, use your speed, upper body movement, and reflexes to get out of the way of what he's trying to do and then move into those better positions where you can reach him quickly and then get back out of harm's way. Now, switching over to Martin. For Martin, I would argue you should focus on your timing. Yeah, you have some decent power, but that has to get there to be effective. You're a little bit slower handed. Now, you do have some reach, but at the same time, it still needs to be something that you're trying to time. And the way you're going to be able to do that is by sitting back a little bit more at times and just making sure you're catching Anderson when he's falling short. You're also going to have to focus on your reads. Is he getting a little too complacent? Is he basically doing the same thing with the same cadence, the same tempo? If he's doing that, begin to time that out and land that right hand, land that left hand, whatever shot makes the most sense based upon what he's giving you. Ultimately, at your age and on short notice, you don't want to rely on exchanges. You certainly don't want it to be a speed battle because you're going to lose those 10 out of 10 times. Instead, it has to be about timing and making sure that the shots you do throw count and really are effective. 
I would also argue land the left over the top. Now, as we mentioned, you have to use your timing in this particular case, especially to get it there. But once you are able to figure out that timing, that's going to be an effective shot for you if you can get it home. Anderson is much faster. However, if you get it timed, your extra reach might get it there, especially having to arc it over the top a little bit. What's more, Anderson leans on the inside just a bit to try to get out of way of shots because he has fast enough reflexes that he can do that. However, if you get the timing right, you might be able to still connect with that shot. He doesn't always step back as much. Take advantage of that. Step in, throw it over the top, and score. This could be your best chance of hurting Anderson, but at the very least, it at least keeps him honest and allows for you to get on the scoreboard and then hopefully build some momentum for yourself. And finally, start fast or keep it steady. Now, I know that seems counterintuitive to one another, but what I'm saying is you have to pick. You can't do both. They're really going to cancel each other out. So either early on, you're going to have to decide if you have about four, maybe five rounds in you, and you're going to have to go for it. You're going to have to throw what you have at him in the best chance of making it a firefight, maybe catching him with something and trying to get him out of there. On the flip side of that, you're going to want to stay back, try to survive a bit, counter more, work on the timing as we mentioned, and you're going to have to give yourself the chance long term to land the blow that ultimately turns this fight into your favor. However, you just can't do both. You can't try to, you know, just shoot your shot immediately and then just try to eventually survive down the stretch because that almost never works. On the other hand, you can't just try to, you know, bide your time as, as it's going on and then ultimately try to win in the last round or two. Anderson's probably too skilled and youthful to let you get away with that. You're going to have to pick an approach, preferably before the fight starts, of course, stick to it and go with it. But don't try to play that line because you'll lose in both instances. Now, in terms of my pick here, personally, even though Martin is a former titleist, I think this is an easy fight for Anderson, easier than it would have been the Kuzubitsky fight, in my opinion, and it will show. It's heavyweight boxing, anything can happen, but I think Anderson handles this one pretty easily. I think Anderson gets active, applies that pressure, and lands big right hands that Martin just doesn't have an answer for. He's going to try to fire back, but in those exchanges is where he will get caught and get dropped. Martin may get up, but the youth and energy mixed with the skill and ambition of Anderson will force a stoppage with the follow-up barrage likely up against the ropes that might even eventually slump Martin once more. Winner, Jared Anderson via early fight stoppage. Now, in terms of the betting odds, I had to kind of do this on the fly, so there aren't any betting odds just yet. Of course, I will drop those down in the comments once I get them. Obviously, Anderson's going to be the favorite. I do think most people are going to predict it's an early fight, but it's just too difficult to say what they're going to look like. But when I get them, I will post them and pin them as a top comment down in the comments section below. And my prediction record as of this recording is 1810 with 11 exact. And I want to give a big shout out to Joseph Dale and Dennis Boston down in the comments section that they're quite a bit. Dale has been on a really good run, especially against some of my picks, which makes me feel sad. Nonetheless, been running really hot. So he's got a good mind for the sport. Of course, wanted to shout him out. And then I just see Dennis down there all the time. So I want to let you guys know down there that I do appreciate it greatly. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Love to hear your thoughts, predictions, bets, so on and so forth. Please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at jcaldron underscore J-O-B. And you can email me at jayunboxing at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you there. Also be sure to check out jayunboxing.com for schedule, results, betting odds, rankings, grades, all that good stuff. And as always, until next time.